droids. <laughs> hey guys, it's John here, and thanks for clicking on my latest video. Today we've got something cool to look at. We have the droids of a Kenner Star Wars. I wanted to take a look at all my favorite droids, funny droids that were in the Kenner line, and just talk a little bit about each one. Yeah, something like that. Cool. I mean, look at all these. These are awesome little droids. So cool. So much fun to have and to collect. The droids of Kenner Star Wars. Let's start out with IG-88 here. He had a couple different variants. He's got like a, if you look over here, this one is more shiny and metallic, like these two are really. And then you've got this shiny metallic slash dull version. And then you've got the totally dull version with no shiny on it at all. So there's almost like three sort of variants within IG-88. It's kind of crazy how they do these variations within the figures. But IG-88 was one of the one of the uh, bounty hunters and one of my favorite droids. I really loved IG-88 as a kid. I liked that he came with two blasters, a rifle and a, and a stormtrooper blaster. I thought it was so cool that he had these clawed hands and, you know, he was, looked like just menacing. Bunch of different eyes. He was like his red eyes on there and all these other weird looking eyes looking around. It was so cool. It was like you were looking at a thing from Saturn 3 or whatever. You know, I loved that movie as a kid. And this guy kind of reminded me of the robot from that movie. So he was really cool. We'll stick with the bounty hunters and look at Zuckus. Nowadays called 4LOM, which makes more sense because 4-LOM is, is, I mean, come on, that's a, that's a, a droid designation where Zuckus is a name and no droids have been named so far in, in Star Wars. So it truly was a Kenner error. You know, we all have to admit that even if we are lifelong this is Zuckus. He's not, you know, <laughs> those of us who want to say this is Zuckus, we do someday have to admit that 4LOM makes more sense as a droid designation. And he is clearly a protocol droid taken into bounty hunting as a profession. Because he's basically got, I mean, look at this. He's got the same body as C-3PO. He's a protocol droid. He's absolutely a protocol droid. Zuckus was another figure that I had to have as a kid. I was just enthralled by this guy. He was so cool. The bug-eyed looking alien face and everything. Him and his counterpart, Forlom. I know they worked together in the low, in the... Expanded Universe lore, they worked together as a partnership. And I thought both those characters with their weird bug eyes and faces there just looked so cool. And they were always like shrouded in mystery with me. So that I just really liked about them. Let's go on to EV99. Oh, I'm knocking things over there. Now this EV99 is not the original Kenner. I don't own the Kenner EV99, the original one. So this is the remake that was done in Power of the Force 2 in 1996 or something like that. 95, 96, which is almost the same mold. I mean, it's, it's very, very close to the original. And uh, so he stands in as my EV99 for now till I get a real one. Quote unquote real one. <laughs> you are a protocol droid, are you not? <laughs> and coming up here on the turnabout, we got 8D8, Jabba's torture droid. 
I highly doubt these were programmed for torture. I think they're just... Jabba was using this droid to do his torture bidding and get the other droids in line. This guy was really, really cool as a kid. I really loved... This is the actual one that I've had since I was a child. And for the longest time, it was the only one I had. And... uh but I've, I've recently picked up a couple more, but every time I get one now, the body's yellow. So I'm amazed that the one I've had since I was a child has stayed white, but other ones I'm picking up in the future have all turned, the body turns yellow, nothing else. The arms, head and legs are fine, but the body turns yellow. So weird. One thing I always loved about 8D8 was that like C-3PO, he's take apart. His legs come off and there's these little pegs that you can put him back onto. And I always liked blowing him apart as a child. Whenever we were playing with him as kids, he would always blow up. My AD8 never stayed intact. Help me, help me. <laughs> Get my legs back on. But you can't do it the other way. Like, 3PO is the other way. His pegs go out. So you can't put these legs on 3PO or vice versa. Always, always loved AT8. Really cool character. Let's do, uh, let's do this droid next because he keeps falling over. The Death Star droid. Now this guy, this guy's tough to find. Like, I got the black perfect. See, like the eyes and the shoulders. So I actually found one with good black paint still. But... His legs are floppy. So there's two issues with this droid. You can find him stiff as a board, but he will have, like, his joints have never been moved, but he will have no paint on his body. And then the other times you find him like I do, most of the time this character's very loose. It seems like as soon as you cracked his limbs free and moved him, he would stay extremely loose for the rest of his life. He just would not... You have to find a factory fresh one to have him in a real tight, stiff jointed version. And that's pretty much clear because some of these are barely played with because the black is still on the shoulders and eyes, but yet they're loose as hell, signifying that someone did play with them. But if anyone played with them for any moment of time, the black would rub off. The black paint on these do not last at all. I've got, you know, tons of them in my collection here where the black paint is completely gone. And sometimes on the shoulder pads, there's none. It's just like this guy is so difficult to stay, to keep in good shape. But I'm happy just having one with the black that looks really good. And he's still got some nice chrome on him. And someday in the future, maybe we'll be able to find one that is stiff and uh, has the black black still on there. Pow, pow, power droids. Pow, pow, power droids. Let's check out some power droids. I loved power droids as a kid. Just absolutely adored these guys. I just, every time I see one that's in decent shape, I've got to get it. You can see there are two different kinds of, of antenna on power droids. There's also two different markings on the side here. But my my two droids have the same body, but different uh, things on top. Where I, I, don't, I, I know there's a different body you can find as well. So there's, there's, a, there's another variation. And I wonder if both top pieces came on that other body as well so there could be like technically four variations to this figure if they even consider all those variations i don't know they could just be you know different factories had different stuff just like the paint jobs on characters different factories had different color paints or they mixed it up slightly different so things looked slightly different just because it was made in a different factory so they're kind of like factory differences, not true variations. I don't know, whatever you want to call them. But whenever I see a power droid in a shape can sort of like this where the sticker's intact, the white line looks good. 
I try to grab it because I've just loved power droids. This was one of the first droids I had as a kid that I just, I mean, the, the feet click, the legs click inside the body, and I would just run around the house clicking the droid legs and making these guys just kind of do their thing. Like, oh, I'm going to... I'm gonna go around the house. Bonk. Bonk, bonk. <laughs> they didn't name him Gonk back then. He was just Power Droid. I think they looked at him like he was a big battery, and they were like, well, if he's a big battery, we gotta call him Power Droid. I don't know. He's a battery with legs, right? <laughs> Next up, let's look at the medical droids. We got 2-1-B, the blue one, and FX-7, this gray one here. Now, 2-1-B, I've got a million of. I've got three or four of them complete, and six, seven, eight of them that are missing the hose and the weapon. But this FX-7, I only have two of him. He seems to be very difficult to find in good shape and intact. Usually these are broken off. Or the claws broken off and I, I can't stand it if these arms are broken off I don't want them in my collection you know it's like <laughs> so by that I've only got two and these are both my originals from when I was a kid these are the two that I've had and uh, my my claw arm does not spin around and it does not spin around on the other one that I have I've got another one up here in this cabinet and uh, that one does not spin around either and I've heard that there are some that have it where it spins around so I've um I've always been looking for one that spins around but I just don't have it this little pokey dealy that 2-1-B has always gets lost I don't know how I managed to keep two of them through the years I've got there's another 2-1-B down here, and he's got his pokey dealy. But somehow I managed to keep, you know, two with with a weapon, and that is very rare. It's just those sticks and things. Why would you play with them? You know, they're like, it's just a stick. It's like, it's not an accessory. It's just a stick. Who cares? You know, as a kid, you're just going to throw that away. But... I guess I was a weird kid with this droid. I had to keep it with him. I loved the medical droids so much. I was just completely enamored by these guys. I remember playing with them to death. This guy's head is very, very loose. Um, spins around very easily. Because I would just play with him to death. I loved that design of these medical droids. Now we'll take a look at R5-D4, my favorite astromech droid. This is the one that I've had since I was a child. He sits in my Y-Wing up there for now. But in later years, I picked up, you know, better looking R5-D4s. Yes, fours, multiple. I got a couple up there. Including one with a third leg created by Paul, my friend Paul Baker. He 3D printed me a third leg and I put it on an R5-D4 up there. <laughs> I just love this droid. I don't know why. When I was a kid, I would always pick him whenever we were doing our little lots and dividing up action figures. We didn't play just Star Wars, by the way. Anything, it was He-Man, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Flash Gordon, you know, like every single different kind of action figure we had went in the pile, went into the lot, and we would divide them up and build a huge army. And uh, and it, we did not play by any kind of rules. Like, oftentimes on my team, Chewbacca was the leader. Chewbacca was the leader of the Freedom Force, and uh, him and Soundwave would lead all the guys into battle. And, and, you know... Optimus Prime generally stayed a leader, but he was probably one of the few leaders that stayed a leader. But other than that, it was like, or at least a general in the army, you know what I mean? <laughs> but R5-D4 here, he always had to get in, in on my army. I had to have him. 
I picked them before any other droid. It's one of the coolest figures. And as you can see, I played with them to death. Probably played with them in the swimming pool. Everything. Just because this guy is really... I mean, even the chrome on his clicker thing is gone. It's like it looks almost clear. Because the chlorine probably ate him away. <laughs> you know this chrome here, I mean? It's totally gone on that one. <laughs> it's probably got eaten by chlorine in the pool. That's probably why he's half yellow. I bet he was like laying in the swimming pool. Probably like... His, let's turn his head here. I bet he got left in the swimming pool floating around like this. And this side of him got sun bleached. <laughs> and that's why he looks like he looks. He's just floating in the swimming pool like this. Oh. And then one day I walked out and was like, oh, I left R5 in the pool. <laughs> uh, please help me. Don't leave me behind, John. Take me inside where it's warm. <laughs> All right, now we got R2-D2. Let's look at some R2s. So we have the original R2-D2, the pop-up sensor scope R2-D2 from Empire Strikes Back, and the pop-up lightsaber from Return of the Jedi. And as you can probably tell right away, this is a repro sticker on uh, the pop-up lightsaber R2, because I played with this one. I don't know why, but I, this this is from my personal collection. This one is not. This one is the one from my collection is on my land speeder in there. And then the R2 from my personal collection, the original one, got lost or just broke or disappeared through the years. And this one I found later in life. But this, so this one here, this pop-up, and the one that's in there the, of the uh, Empire Strikes Back one are the two that are from my childhood collection. And I managed to keep the lightsaber because I think I just I kept it in him like that and never really pulled it out or used it. But the sticker got so worn off, he looked like that. He was just this white, clear, you know, no sticker at all. Because, again, I think I played with him in the, in the uh, bathtub or something. And the sticker just got wiped away. So a few years back, I decided that I wanted him to look decent. And since I'm not selling him, I'm not going to sell him, I bought a sticker off somebody. It could have been Toy Poloy or whatever, you know, I bought the sticker off of. It was someone who had one of those YouTube channels that showed how they made them and how they did it. And, uh... I followed his link and bought one. So it very well could have been a Toy Poloi sticker right there. Yeah. Yeah. R2-D2s. Now there's a variant in this original one. You see how this is like dark blue? So I think this is the um, original early bird one. And then later on, he was more of a lighter blue, which is kind of like what, well, I don't know. Are these, it's hard to tell when, that, when I don't have one to compare it to, but I know there are some that are, that are like a light blue, almost greenish when you look at it in the light. So um, those are the ones that came out later as far as my, my understanding goes. I, I don't know. I don't know a hundred percent on which is rare or why all that stuff, but there is a variation there in the original R2. See, these two look blue to me, and that one looks more green. Do you see what I'm seeing there? Which I think is what it was with this one. This one had a blue, like a real blue, which is what these are. And then it was a slightly blue-green, which is what that looks like to me. And that would be the, that was like the second version of this guy. Hmm. All right, let's bring 3PO to the forefront. And he'll be the last droid we talk about today. C-3PO had two different versions, the original one and a take-apart one, and I loved them both. And uh, I've lost track. Um, I know that the take-apart one is my take-apart from when I was a kid, and uh, I only own one take-apart C-3PO, and that's the one I've had since I was a kid. 
but I've got 10 or 12 of the bags lying around. There's, there's always, every time you buy a lot or a collection of figures, you always get that bag. <laughs> and then I've got 10 or 12 3PO's lying around. I mean, there's one down there. There's another one right there. And, you know, I've lost track of which C-3PO was my original because we didn't mark my C-3PO's feet. And I, I don't know now. I've, I've lost track over the years which one's my original one. But one of them in my collection is the one I've had since I was a kid. And that's pretty cool. I always like... I, I say that... I say that just because... Personally, I think it's cool when you still have the actual one that you played with as a kid. You, you know what I mean? And and I know... I know a lot of collectors are like me out there where... I'm, I mean, having one... Kenner figure like collecting Kenner is different than any other Star Wars any other toy line okay and I don't know I mean maybe this is just me I, I I don't think so because a lot of the guys I knew in Seattle were the same way and uh and I so I mean I'm I I the last 20 years of so of my collecting experience has been that everyone thinks the same way I do but it could just be a Seattle thing where Every time we see a bunch of Star Wars figures you know, at a garage sale or a lot or you're at a boot sale, you've got to pick them up. If they're if they're relatively cheap enough, you know, if they're not at collector's prices, if you, you get a lot of figures, you know, oh, here's 20 of them and the guy's going to sell them for me for 30 bucks or, you know, this guy's got 100 figures and he only wants $50 for them. You know what I mean? You're going to grab that set of figures and you're going to add them to your collection. And that's why I have... You know, some of these figures, I've got 10, 12, and some like the Cloud Car Pilot, the Bespin Security Guard, the Death, Death Squad Commander. Like, I've got almost 20 of them. Because I just can't, like, I can't bring myself to sell any of the Star Wars characters from Kenner. Once I have one in my hand, it's like... It's just this treasured memory. It doesn't matter how many I have. If I've got 50 of them, I'm still going to keep 50 of them. Because I, I, it's, it's different than any other toy line. Like, the memories, the things that this, this means to me, it's, it's not... You know, you can't just get one collection, one set of all 100 figures, and be like, I'm done with it. I'm, 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 I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, you're never done collecting Kenner Star Wars figures. Once you have one set, you'll go for a second. Once you have a second set, you'll go for a third. Then you'll go for a fourth. Then you'll go for a fifth. And you're in, or you're looking at variations, or you're looking at, oh, this one's painted slightly different, you know? It's like, there's always, you always want more. And that's, you know, been the last, like I said, everyone in, that I knew in Seattle in our big collectors clubs was that way. And I've been that way my entire life, and it's like you. I, I feel like that's what collecting Kenner Star Wars is. You you're gonna get multiples, and you're not gonna want to give them up. You're just like, I gotta keep these. I can't. I can't. I just can't sell them. There's no, you know, like I don't care how many sets I have completed. I I can't sell them. And uh, it's just that. It's like parting with a child. You know, you can't give up your kid. You know what I mean? So and that's how, once you have these in your possession, no matter how many of a character you have, you just can't get rid of it. It's like, it's like cutting off a finger or something, you know? So, yeah, I, I, that's, and I think it's cool when one of those ones that you own, going all the way back to why I started rambling, is the one that you had when you were a child. You know, you're like, I've got the very one, that I had when I grew as you know that I played with as I grew up and then I've got all these other ones that are different versions and different you know various states of condition some are mint some are loose as hell you know and destroyed but it's just uh it's just a thing you know anyway guys I thought I'd mention a couple honorable mentions. So there is a Bomar Monk you can see back there in my Java display. And we have the probe droid from the Hoth battle display. And some might consider those because the uh, Bomar Monk was one of the first 
Malloways in the 90s when Kenner was switching over to Hasbro. And then the probe droid. I mean, is that technically a figure? I don't know. It's a droid. It says probe droid. But I didn't include it in this group. I just, he's on the playset as a display piece, really. He doesn't really, I mean, you can't stand him up. He doesn't have articulation. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's that age old question what's a figure and what's not, you know? But I just wanted to also point out these two curiosities, these oddities of Star Wars nature. They are, they have been demetalized. So this is what your C-3PO figure looks like if you take off the paint and metal. They are just sometimes brown plastic with a white, bluish white head or a total clear sort of white plastic. And when I found these, I found them at a boot sale, like a flea market boot sale kind of thing, you know, that, you know, you guys in the UK call them boot sales. I call them flea markets, swap shops, swap meets, things like that. Um, van sales, car sales. They People pull up with a community sale in their car or van and just open up the back and they sell things out of it. Um, and these were in, let's see, these were at a covered tent like thing and there were boxes of stuff. And I looked down through this box and I found both of them in the box just laying there. So they weren't prominently displayed. They were just in a box of random toys going from the eighties and nineties all the way through. And at first when I was sitting there, I thought, holy crap, are these prototypes, you know, like what? What is this? I know it's C-3PO, but why are they so weird colored, you know? And this brown one especially, I mean, you could tell it didn't have any... There's no leftover markings from the paint at all, where this this one... I could tell there was something going on, because you could see in it, in certain spots, you're like, well, there's some of the chrome plating, the some of the vac metalized in the cracks and crevices... There's still some vac metalized material left in there. So I knew that this one was stripped, but I had no idea what this one was because it's still clean. There's no vac metalization left on this one at all. And um, so I was wondering if it was some kind of prototype or something. But I asked the guy, you know, do you know what these are? And he goes, well, I don't know. I, I, I think they're like Star Trek or Star Wars, something like that. And... Uh, He's like, they've just been in my son's collection for years. And I, I asked what he wanted and it was like 10 bucks. So I paid him the $10 and walked away. And uh, when I got, you know, to the club, the group in Seattle and like showed everybody what I found, the general consensus was, because a lot of these guys collect prototypes and things like that. And the general consensus was that both of them were stripped. They just, whoever had them, decided to strip them of their chrome and vac metalized paint. And uh, they're not actual true prototypes. So, and, and clearly this one isn't. You can clearly tell that this one was, it's still got some of the vac metalized in the, in the crevices. But this one was the one that was really the big one in question. And also because they're so loose, they're like a prototype would not have been played with and had been that loose generally it was the consensus of the group but it's still neat to see what they look like before being painted you know they're kind of neat little things to have in the collection all right guys there we go i think it's about time i wrap this up thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you guys checking these droids out with me Thanks for letting me ramble on and tell stories and, I don't know, just go on forever. I know this video was a lot longer than I intended. I thought I would just go, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, and be done with it. But I've just rambled on and had stories to tell and things to say about each one. And uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me and letting me reminisce and ramble on and talk Star Wars Kenner droids. 
<laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. See you guys on the next one. I'm John, and I'm out of here. Bye-bye.